about entrepreneurship is you're going to always get failure. To make sure that product satisfies the need of your potential customers. <laughs> yes! Go girls! Woo! Hi, I'm Shea Banigbe, and you're welcome to Binging with Game Changers, where we delve into the minds of people with celebrated brands and careers, so we're able to smash the sort of ceilings they've been able to smash and do big things generally. Today is going to be phenomenal. That we have amazing guests, but before we dig in, how have you been? I've been okay, and I was somewhere recently, and I overheard two ladies speak. One just had a baby and one had never had a baby. And you know, the, the excited one said, I was childbirth, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And the, other, the lady that had the baby, you know, just, excuse, you know, and, you know how, why would you ask me how childbirth was? I think you should just congratulate me and, you know, let that be it. And I was wondering why the attitude, and eventually she opened up and told her, oh, I had a CS, it was, you know, this. She was, she was almost ashamed telling her that she had a CS. Why do we do that, Nigerians? However, when you pop out that baby, is okay. You have tried. Carrying that baby for nine months is work enough. And you even do more work after that baby comes out. Do not let anybody make you feel less of a woman or like you haven't, you know, tried because a baby came out via CS. Hit me up on social media, on Facebook. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at the BWG show. Let's talk about this thing. It's a naughty issue and we need to deal with it. Why do we tend to kind of look down on or however, why do we do that to women that have CS operations to have their babies? The baby came out, they're healthy, the baby is alive and healthy. That is all. Okay? Anyway, when we return, we'll be meeting our game changers and I cannot wait. See you in a bit. Welcome back to the show and our game changer for today is someone who is known as the Recycle Queen. She definitely changed the game in the waste management industry in Nigeria. To imagine that she's actually rewarding low income neighborhoods for getting rid of their waste and actually they're not just getting rid of it but she's giving them money you know to do that. I think that's just amazing. The fact that she started a trend, a recycling trend in Nigeria and I know that it's they're taking over guys. Welcome with me, Bill Kiss Adebi Abiola. Nice to have you on the show. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Wow, your welcome song is <laughs> Nikki Minaj's. <laughs> No frauds. No frauds, really? Yeah. You're a tapping mama. Tell me about that. <laughs> sit down, sit down, sit down. Thank you. I, mean, I just like the song. It's very, you know. Like when like, you're working, is it workout song? Like, yeah, or? like just you know, no punches. <laughs> let's get. You know. <laughs> okay, that's so, that's yeah, that's everything. Let's what get you work need. done. Yeah, like yeah. when you're going to work in the morning, like, like I'm, not gonna, I'm going to conquer it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, amazing, amazing. How are you, Bill? Okay, fine, fine, fine. So exciting to see you. Yeah, thank you. I'm I love meeting here. game changers. Thank like you. people that, you too. Oh no, please don't start it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, people that can. What excites me about your story is the fact that what you're doing had never been done, at least at the scale you were doing it in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you were actually you had lived abroad. Okay, so Bilkis was in university here. And then there was a lot of court activities. And then her parents whisked her out of university because of all the violence. You know, they didn't want to lose their precious daughter. And she was there. She, you schooled for how many years? Uh, in the US, I did six, no, six years, first of all. So I had a much, uh, bachelor's degree and a master's. And then I went to work. For about five, five years. years yeah. So you were there for, say, about 13, thereabouts? Uh, about long, longer than that, actually. Yeah, 13. Yeah, yeah 13 years, yeah. It feels, it feels like longer though. Why? How did <laughs> you get the. I don't. Let, is it liver now? To live all that comfort, you know, that organized life, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then you were not coming to take some high flying job, yeah. like some dollars and all of that. You were yeah. coming to start a waste management. Management. Know, trash. Business. Kole kole. Kole kole business. business. Kole, kole, I love kole that. Business. Talk to me about I mean, that. It's, it's people always ask me, how did you get into this business? I say, you know what? I fell and I hit my head. I don't have any reason. But you know what? For me, it's like I'm a very proud Nigerian, a proud Lagosian. Sometimes it's hard to be a proud Nigerian, but I am <laughs> sometimes. And it's really something that makes that really motivates me because there are so many, you know, people that you know you go abroad. There are opportunities. You know, I had opportunities to work there mm -hmm. and stay in the U.S. and make money. Some of my friends from business school are making a lot of money now. Mm -hmm. 
but I wanted to just make a change. I wanted to do something different. Because there was actually a class I took while I was at U the U.S. that solidified it for me because, you know, there were people that were solving problems in, you know, in Africa and in Latin America, and many of them were not African. They were not from like the people in Africa, they were not they were white people, they wow. were Indians. So you know, where, where are we as Africans? What are we doing? So we have to wake up. So that actually for me was that, you know, that like strong passion and pride for my country and wanting to just do something about it. And I feel like waste management is a really powerful sector that we've not really tapped, tapped into. We've not. Everybody's thinking about oil, financial sector, but waste is money. That's amazing. You had a, you got an MSc, you know, first, yes, yes. but went on to MIT. Yes. That's an Ivy League school, by the way. Yes. To get an MBA. Why did you think an MBA was essential for you? It's very important because an MBA basically makes you a generalist, especially if you're not really focused in a particular field. Um, it teaches you how to be a manager. It teaches you how to communicate, how to lead teams, how to network. So, and I definitely wanted to be a part of the MIT ecosystem because MIT has this really powerful tech entrepreneurship culture and I wanted to tap into that and it really, really helped me because without that support, I don't think we would have been able to start with Cyclers and be where we are today. Amazing, amazing. You started a scrap metal business. Was it right? Oh, you did your research. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Did your research. Thank you. <laughs> you started a scrap metal business, I think, the a moment you time. got in. Yes. And it failed. It failed, yeah. How did that make you feel? I was frustrated, you know, we, we did all the calculations. I actually even went to the World Bank to present. Oh my. You know, and... And it failed. It failed, it failed. We didn't work out. And that was because we didn't have credibility. Nobody, mm -hmm. like, nobody knows me at that point. Nobody knew who I was. And they're like, who is this small girl coming to collect money? Did it, did it make you hesitant to go into recyclers? No. Because it's like, you know, it, the thing about entrepreneurship is you're going to always get failure. Failure is part of Thank it you. every day. Thank you. You fail every day. You know, like somebody was saying, if you fall 40 times, if you fall 39 times, you stand up 40 times. So it's just, what just matters is that just stand up. If you fail, stand Keep up. Going. Keep going. So that was just what I was thinking. You said with the last business, credibility was an issue. How did you solve that with recyclers? The mistake I made was I wanted to go big. Immediately. Immediately. With me, with me and nobody. Nobody knows me. And I was going to come and ask for $5 million uh -huh. uh, money. Uh, they, they, so what, you know, what, so how did, what did you change? So when we cycle as it was like, okay, let's start small. Let's even show that it works. So we started with very, very little capital. We started showing the model that, that it works. We were very, so we went down to the grassroots. And so it's like we, we built the market and we showed that the market can work with our own capital, you know, okay. exactly. So not other people's not money. Other people's money. So now if an investor wants to come and invest in recyclers, we've shown there's the model, a there's, a, there's a story, there's a proven business model, there's financials, even if it's at a small scale. So it's, they can now see the trajectory. They can see that this is going to work. So we you have got to show funding from organizations like what the world? So Bank? like um, MIT, um, okay, the school. it's a school, Echoing Green is a fellowship. So I, I was Cartier Women initiative award so mm -hmm. i was a very serious you know app yeah. applier applying for grants <laughs> i was a professional apply apply for if you didn't get any of these grants do you think you'd have been able to jump start the business it would have been really tough it would have been really really tough okay it would have been, it would have been tough and it would have been very slow Bilkis, you've got great skin. Oh, thank you. When we return, Bilkis will be telling us what she is doing to glow. Uh, yeah, I want to like know. I yeah. See you in a bit. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We are still speaking with Bilkis, who is, our, as far as I'm concerned, Africa's recycle queen. I cannot believe that she has actually rewarded people in low-income neighborhoods with over $75,000 for what? Getting rid of their own waste. We're ma she's making Nigeria a healthier and cleaner place, and I'm excited. Bilkis, you've got glowing skin. Thank you. What's the secret, girl? I wash my face twice a day, religiously. I do too. Eh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's fine. I mean, I I'm not bad. I, too, yeah, right? you know, you know, I told you that your skin is good now. Uh, thank, so you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Too. Amazing, amazing. I know from research, and also we spoke before the show. Yeah. Your, your, what you do, you have to depend heavily on unskilled labor. Yes, absolutely. I run a company, a clean company that also has to depend a lot on unskilled labor because I mean it's very basic services, so you don't need, you know, graduates, you know, mm -hmm. to provide the service. I know the 
problems yes. that come with people that have not been trained in the four walls of a university. Yes. That level of professionalism and passion, you know, and a whole lot that comes with, you know, taking your work seriously is not there. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? And you have about 150 people yeah, that work with us, about 123 actually. Beautiful. That work with us. How do you manage that? I actually don't think people have to go to university to actually learn to be professional. But I think that there's so many things that we in Nigeria, we don't really respect professions. Um, there needs to be a, even they call it um, dignity in labor. So no matter what job you are doing, we need to be proud of our job. You know, electrician. The, you know, in some, in my, my brother was working in the U.S. Um, for a while, and he said in his plant, the most paid, the, high, the, the highest paid person was the electrician. Mm. They were paying, they were getting paid more than all the other guys. Mm -hmm. You know, so we just need to respect professions. You know, well, um, plumbing, welding, have some kind of. Okay, we the receive. We as, users, as a country, as you respect the cleaner. Even even the people that, for instance, now if you want, you want to go and learn how to be a welder, there is no professional welding. You go and learn under somebody. They, you know, you they don't do learn freedom. that. You do freedom, then you will do this. But there is no like, okay, I have you, a cost, you have a certificate. Okay, where is your shop? Is it on standard? Is it clean? Are you wearing the right uniform? Are you wearing the right shoes? So that you look as it, like a professional. Are you treating your customers well? Are you, are you, you know? So I think a lot of this, the, the handwork professions, we don't have that. That's number one. And I think also, as a people, we just, I don't really know what it is. But our work ethics. I think there's something horrible. lacking in our culture when it comes to the it's approach sad. to work. It's like, I think it's over, it's just happened recently. You know when you have, I mean, I love whiskey though, but with whiskey and David Doe, people think it's overnight. You know, they think that when whiskey was doing his music, he just went and sat down for one day and he became... Oh, Joe Legba, Joe Legba, Joe Legba, and he's now rich. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that the guy probably suffered. Mm -hmm. You know, so people just, they, they want to work, 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 and they... Ah. They get tired and they don't know that they have to continue walking, you know. So I don't know what it is, but you're right. Like we just. Ha so how do you manage yours? Because I can't even say you. So you. I don't think you ever solve those things. You never solve. But you keep managing and trying to improve. What On do you people, do? I think for us as a company, we've just evolved to that point where everyone realizes that you don't get paid for work that you don't do. You know, somebody yeah. that I, I know, he calls it work chop. You know, and I think that's a fantastic uh, word to use. And you know something? You know, I think also I don't want to be. You know, there's this like, oh, there's a little bit of a rivalry between people that traveled abroad and people that didn't travel abroad. Like, you know, but I don't want to bring that up. But I didn't school abroad. Yeah, but you, so you have the work ethic, right? Yeah. But for me, when I was in school, I worked, I was a cleaner. Oh, wow. You know, when I was in um, um, college, I, I was a cleaner. I worked in my school cafeteria. You know, so there was no mommy, even if they want to send money to me, it's very expensive. Nigeria doesn't give that, but guess what? I also mm -hmm. worked in uni. I was mm -hmm. selling clothes. I needed money. So I would, to I would go to older aunties that were traveling abroad. I'll get some, sell. So I had it. Whether I like it or not, I worked. Yes, yeah, so and I, I think, developed. Yeah, yeah so I think we have to force, you know, that's in us. That culture, that culture start early. Of working because. Your, you know, your parents are not going to give you money, I your agree. uncle. I think it's a bit too late to start learning what it means to work hard after university. I That's think so. Nice. I think we, we need to look into that. Maybe like the, in primary school. <laughs> we need to start teaching them in primary school. You've received over $55,000 in grants. Oh, yeah. And a lot more. You A lot more. <laughs> no, not that, that much more. <laughs> That's a little bit more. A little All bit right. More. But <laughs> you've, you've, you've built something out of it. Come on. You, 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 you're employing over 123 people. people. Yes. Whoever gave you, whatever organization gave you the grant, I'm sure they're lying and saying, oh, they feel good. Yeah. But I've met so many nice. Nigerians, great ideas, but they collect this money and we see nothing. Huh. How are you able to put such money to good use? And what would you tell somebody out there that is going for a grant to do, to do or not do? So I think one of the most seductive things in Nigeria is that when you have a story mm -hmm. and you begin to show some, some semblance of success, there's this, or there's this really there's this circuit of, oh, come and give a speech, come and talk. <laughs> so there's, I was telling somebody yesterday that there's actually, there's a tendency, if you're not careful, mm. you spend more time talking about what you are doing <laughs> than doing the than do. Doing the do. <laughs> you know, so like as, in, as Nigerians, and, and uh, there's a lot of people like that, that they, they started off and they are doing very well. They have some success and you see them like now, they're talking, they're always in speeches, you're always seeing them talking. So like, I think we as a people just need to just realize that like, you have to, there's actually a business that you have to work on and just focus on the business. 
Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. You were recently appointed to the board yes. of the Employment Trust Fund for Lagos State. Yes. Yay! You know, I'm excited to know that we have minds like yours working in government, with government, for government. How did you feel about that? I was really happy. I was oh. really happy. Like, I was proud and I was very honored that the you know the gov governor felt that I would be able to come and serve. And I think, it's, you know, the Employment Trust Fund is something that is really going to it's the first of its kind in africa and it's really going to make a big difference for us in lagos we have millions and millions of young entrepreneurs that need support but they just need that little you know push to get them you know to where they are going we have people that borrow as little as thirty thousand naira just to, to, into, to you know to, to um help their businesses did you get that appointment based on what you've done with recyclers yes was it Based on that? Yes, I think so. Can you yeah. imagine? Building your business and then government, is, you know, now recognizes what you've You're done doing. and then appoints you. Yeah. I'm going, I think I'm starting a waste management business. Yeah, come, <laughs> come and join us. <laughs> no, I think I do better with fashion. Yeah, yeah I can see that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank Bill Case. I've learned so much and I'm sure someone out there is inspired to make some thousands of dollars from waste in whatever way because definitely I know you can't do this alone. You know, so. It's a big sector. Yes, so it, it is massive. People and I know yeah. you want more people. Thank well, only you people so that are passionate. Please, passionate only people. passionate folks. Please. Only passionate folks. Yes, you're going to get only passionate people. Yes, so no, 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 no getting into the waste management industry if you know you are not passionate because it's not even glamorous, really. Dirt, smelling that every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. It was nice having you on the show. When we return, we'll be meeting our corporate game changer for today. See you in a bit.